these new niggas out, I'm that new nigga. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine niggas want a war, ten niggas on the floor, eleven niggas on the floor, twelve killers want a war, thirteen. What is up, guys, and welcome to this tutorial. Today, I'm gonna be teaching you guys my hyperlapse workflow, the way I create my hyperlapses. What may make my process unique is that I do it entirely within After Effects. A lot of people will go into Photoshop and edit their raw photos using Camera Raw. A lot of people will use Premiere to create their hyperlapses, and those are obviously valid methods, but I like doing it all within After Effects because you can do it all within After Effects. Camera Raw is actually built into After Effects, which is something I just recently found out because I wanted to import my raw photos into After Effects and see what happened, and it just popped up with Camera Raw. That makes this a lot faster than a lot of other methods where you have to use Photoshop and Premiere or Photoshop and After Effects. You can just do it all within After Effects with a very simple workflow, and it only takes a few steps. I just want to make an announcement that I am currently putting together an After Effects course, kind of like a master class for those of you who want to work directly with me and have me teach you hands-on pretty much everything I know about editing and VFX. So if any of you would be interested in that, make sure to comment down below and let me know, or you can DM me on Instagram at Drew Kosak, or you could shoot me an email at my personal email, drewkosak at gmail.com. Please reach out if you're interested in that because that's something that I plan on launching by the end of 2020. I want this course slash masterclass to be very hands-on and personal, so I'm gonna try to keep it to around 10 people, so if you are interested in that, please reach out ASAP. The first step before we go into After Effects is to take your photos. The way I do it is I pick a subject, center my frame on that subject, take a picture, walk two steps forward, take another picture, take two steps forward, center my frame, take another picture, take another two steps forward, center my frame, take another picture, and keep it on the same subject throughout. Let's get right into the software. Open up After Effects, go to File, Import, File. And then you navigate to wherever you have your raw photos, select them all, make sure to click camera raw sequence. This will make it so that when you open up this set of files, you can edit the first photo in camera raw and then it will apply it to the entire set of photos. This makes everything super fast and simple. Make sure create composition is checked as well, but it should be automatic and then press import. And I'm getting a warning because I do not have an 8751 image because I actually took that photo, I didn't like it, and then I retook it because I framed it improperly. So this is okay, just press okay if you happen to do the same thing. We will take care of that missing photo later. For most of you, you probably won't even have that missing photo. That was just me being a perfectionist and wanting to recenter my photo. Anyhow, everything opens up in Camera Raw. And this will look very familiar for those of you who are used to using Photoshop or who are photographers. So let's get right to editing this photo. And this will, again, be applied to that entire set of photos, which makes this process very, very very quick and easy. So I already like the white balance on this, so I'm not gonna make any adjustments to the temperature or tint. And actually the exposure is pretty near perfect. Let's raise the blacks a bit so that there's no clipping. And as soon as this box turns completely black, then the clipping's gone. And then there's no clipping on the white, so we'll leave that. Please just ignore my thumb on the bottom left of the picture. This is a 6,000 by 4,000 picture, so it's easy to crop out later on, but make sure not to stick your thumb in front of the lens. What I really like about using Camera Raw is that you can play around with these texture and clarity sliders. You don't want to go too overkill. I like strong clarity and texture, but it can obviously get looking really weird if you go too hard. That just looks a little off. So tastefully add some clarity and texture. I like doing around 50 to 70 clarity, but that does change our exposure. So let's actually bring the blacks up a little more so it doesn't clip. And then let's actually bring the highlights down a bit because clarity kind of pushes the highlights a bit. And that looks good now. Toggle to see what it used to look like. Now it just has that sharpness to it. And I actually think the highlights might be a little strong still. So I'm gonna turn those down a bit. And then let's add some texture just to make everything look really sharp and solid and it looks really cool once you see the hyperlapse again don't go too overkill with this or else your image will start to look weird let's say about 23 then I'm actually gonna bring the whites down a bit because this seems a bit bright in general that looks a lot better and then I'm gonna bring the highlights down a little more there we go I'm liking how that's starting to look maybe a little contrast but I, I really don't need to add that much contrast because the texture and clarity sliders add contrast on their own. Eh, actually that seems a bit much and I'm gonna drop these highlights even more all the way down to 100. And I actually still want to drop those highlights a tad bit so I'm gonna go down to my curve 
and drop them down there and then bring my shadows back up a tad. And I really like how that's starting to look. Original, current. Now we just need some saturation. Jam that up a bit. And ooh, I am really starting to like this photo. Another cool thing you can do with Camera Raw is shift the color hues. The reason why I like doing this in Camera Raw is that the image is a lot more flexible when you're working with raw photos. So you can really shift these and completely change colors without the image breaking like it would in a video file, assuming you're not shooting raw video files. So let's actually adjust these greens to be a little more fall colored because it's it's kind of fall time. And then shift these yellows to be a little more orange. I like that. And then let's make our blues a little more aqua, just a tad, and just soften them up a bit. Purples. A little more blue. Oranges, I like to make them a teeny bit more red just because I'm not a big fan of yellows. So I, I push them over to the red side. And then for the reds, let's push them over towards the oranges because I'm not a huge magenta person. And that just shifts everything a teeny bit if you want to see the difference. It just kind of gives it a slightly different color scheme, which is what's really cool about Camera Raw. This and the texture and clarity sliders just make it really cool to use, especially for hyperlapses. It gives it that oomph that regular video does not necessarily have. You can add a split tone. I typically do not. I just like shifting the actual colors. If I want to do a split tone, I'll do that later on top of the video. Detail, you can add some sharpening. I typically don't go over 60 on raw photos, but I like how that looks. Well, we can keep that there. You can do anything you want that you can normally do within Camera Raw. But that's pretty much all I do in Camera Raw. I play around with the white balance. In this case, we didn't have to. And then the exposure sliders, the texture and clarity specifically are very useful. And then I add saturation if necessary, take it away if necessary, and then use the curve if I need a little more shifting of the exposure that I wasn't able to do on the previous sliders. Sharpening can be useful. And then the hue sliders are also useful. If you wanna bring up certain colors, for example, you could just jam the blues up a bit. I actually liked where they were. I, I don't want them to be too harsh. Let's maybe add a teeny bit. Let's bring up the aquas a tad. And maybe the oranges? No. I like my oranges. Just a tad bit more muted than my blues. Anyhow, I think this looks great. It started out like this. Now it looks like this. Once you get your image to where you want it to be in Camera Raw, press OK. Voila, you have your hyperlapse. It is complete. It's already there within After Effects whenever it decides to load because these are huge freaking photos. Let's let this render out for a second because, again, these are really large, raw photos. No! And now everything is rendered out. As you can see at the end there, there's that little file that's missing because I, again, deleted that file and retook the photo to center it properly. So I'm going to control shift D to split this clip and then just delete that one little bit. Then shorten my timeline and now we don't have that missing file. So next, I would pre-compose this to make it all one big clip that we can stabilize. We'll name this clip Hyperlapse. Jeez, I can't type. All right, so now we have our hypolapse. And I'm actually going to right click this blue bar at the top here and trim comp to work area to get rid of that little space at the end. Then all you really have left to do is stabilize your hyperlapse. It's that easy. Search warp stabilizer and then drag it onto your pre comp. So now you just have to sit here for maybe like 20 minutes because it takes forever to stabilize 6,000 by 4,000 raw photos. But it's okay because it'll look really sick when this is done. It's a simple process, it's not a quick process. Maybe I named this video improperly but whatever it's gonna be cool nigga i've been packing a black mac with a wrapped in a backpack with a stack in a mad max in the back of the black cab and a cat in a snapback put a cap in your back fat murder you when you whack little cat in a hat rap. and now we're done and that actually took about two minutes it didn't take 20 minutes i was being dramatic anyway this is our new stabilized Ugh. we have to wait for it to render give it a second why you bring my name up in the first place tori you ain't fucking with me on my worst day tori wasn't better than me when i was a first grade tori we could do this every year on your birthday tori. And now the warp stabilizer is rendered so all we have left to do is adjust these settings and figure out how to minimize this crop because it's scaling in 150%. We do not want that. So let's actually change the smoothness, the, the smoothness. I can't even fucking say smooth smooth to 25% and see what it looks like now. Luckily, when you let warp stabilizer render out, you can change these settings.
settings and it's already rendered out. And 25% looks pretty darn nice. Let's actually try 10% because the lower we can make this and it's still smooth, the more of the image we get to see, the sharper it will look in your final edit. And I actually kind of like that. Yeah, no, I like that. That's it, that's your hyperlapse, you're done. So I'm assuming that most of you aren't just going to make a hyperlapse, maybe some of you are just making one hyperlapse, but if you wanna use this in an edit, I would actually go and pre-render this. So file, export, add to Adobe Media Encoder and export it as a high quality ProRes file so that there's no loss in quality. When I'm pre-rendering files for use in edits, I usually do a QuickTime format, then I export it in Apple ProRes 422HQ. You let that run and you are done, you have your hyperlapse. That's it for the tutorial, that's my hyperlapse workflow. It's actually pretty straightforward and simple. Let me know any tutorial requests in the comments below. And don't forget to reach out if you are interested in that masterclass. Again, I'm trying to keep it to around 10 people. It needs to be hands-on and a small group of people so I can really make sure that each one of you learns everything you need to learn to become proficient within After Effects. If you're interested, make sure to shoot me an email at drewkosak at gmail.com or shoot me a DM on Instagram at drewkosak. I've already had over 10 people express interest on Instagram and my Instagram following is smaller than my YouTube following. So make sure to let me know if you're interested as soon as possible. Anyhow, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next tutorial or video, whatever it ends up being. All right, peace guys. You know, Jonah got a hotter flow. I'ma do a Travis shit I did a while ago. I'ma do a Drake shit I did a while ago. Throw your ass off a cliff, make you say Geronimo. Then you had one chance, now you slumped on. Go back in the booth, make a